the Government Week in Review for the week ending Friday, July 21st. I am Rakesha St. Louis. In the headlines, Prime Minister calls for a proactive approach to tackle crime and violence. And Grenada is prepared to host the Windward Island School Games. Details to this and more after the break. Happy will you get through? Like you're ready for carnival, boy. Carnival? Nah, man. Oh, you mean nah? And you're polishing your shoes every day? Ha, <laughs> Sis, listen to this. St. Mark, it's your turn to shift the paradigm for a healthier you. Grenada Shifts, the biggest and most exciting health and wellness walk, moves to the Sunset Parish on Thursday, 27 July, in fine style. Yes, it's the major walk size everyone keeps talking about. And watch now, this ain't no boring walk, eh? Because we've got musical accompaniment along the entire route by DJ Magnum Force. The walk begins at 4.30 p.m. from Samaritan Junction, passing through Industry, Duquesne, non pariel Waltham, onto the Alston George Park in Victoria for the big, big climax. This activity is organized by the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Religious Affairs. So call now to register at 444-8414-444-8427 or 440-2649, extensions 21038 or 21049 for your branded t-shirt. <laughs> Welcome back. As government and stakeholders seek to address the heightened cases of crime and violence in Grenada, Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell is appealing for Grenadians to foster a culture of understanding, respect, and peace. Into the seventh month of the year, the Royal Grenada Police Force has so far recorded six suicide cases, 14 homicides, and the seizure of 31 firearms, among others. Prime Minister Mitchell said there is need for urgent intervention to reduce these statistics, which requires a whole-of-society approach. It's absolutely critical that when we look at these situations, that we ensure that we take a preventative approach to the loss of life rather than a reactionary approach. And certainly we accept uh, the Royal Grenada Police Force, which has the responsibility for law and order in our society will have to do more to ensure that we minimize the risk of further homicides for the year. One other area, and I've spoken about that as Minister of National Security on several occasions already, is the increased interdiction of illegal firearms. Last year, as of this time, 16 illegal firearms or inter, uh, interdicted. As of this year, we are at 31. So to that extent, we certainly wish to commend the Royal Union Police Force in ensuring that the interdiction rate has stepped up and that we've been successful in doing so. But it also points to a dangerous trend in our view, which is the proliferation of firearms within our communities. I've indicated that the government's policy on this is that we will take a zero tolerance to firearms. But we also have to appreciate that the firearms are not made in Grenada. They are brought into Grenada. And this is not just a Grenada problem, but a regional problem. This is something that impacts all of us, and we have to ensure that we take a collective approach, that we take a people and community first approach to ensuring it. Programs and projects with emphasis on mediation and mental wellness will be the focus to prevent a recurrence, especially among the youthful population. Prime Minister outlined government and non-governmental programs that will provide support. There is the OASIS program, which is an opportunity to advance and support youth for success. That has been implemented in conjunction with the Organization for Eastern Caribbean States and will primarily focus on increasing the diversion of youth young persons away from courts and custodial sentences. Young persons who have been identified as being at risk to offend are referred to the probation unit in conjunction with the police authorities. And they are taken into what we describe as the alternative program. That program exposes young persons to life skills, conflict resolution, anger management, leadership skills, and the ability to discuss the issues that confront them. He encouraged the Grenadians to be their brother's keeper. I implore churches and community leaders to continue to play an active role in driving community engagements, providing opportunities for connection, 
understanding and healing through after school programs and activities. As a government and in partnership with local NGOs, we have several initiatives in place to assist citizens who may need additional support. The Psychosocial Support Unit in the Ministry of Social and Community Development, Housing and Gender Affairs is one such initiative. We intend to strengthen community policing and engagement, but we are interested in getting to the root issues that have been manifested in violence within our communities. Senior government officials have, now have a better appreciation for projects and programs aligned with the priority focus areas of the Deacon Mitchell administration following a tour of some of these sites during the week. It was a senior management board meeting with a difference as it removed the permanent secretaries and other senior management officers from the usual enclosed space and brought them outdoors. The group visited the General Hospital and Phase 2 of the facility Wester Hall Secondary School and St. David's RC, Simone Cultural Center and the Grenville Bus Terminus, the Maribor Propagation Station. Secretary to the Cabinet, Ms. Cavell Lett, told GIS the tour will help senior officials make more informed decisions in relation to projects and programs. It allows board members to observe the different agencies, projects and programs and to provide feedback for their, their work. And it helps us to understand the links between the government's priorities and the work of the ministry on a national development or the whole of government perspective. We discussed the impact and the results of the program. And so to do this, we, we decided we're going to go around the island. We're going to look at each project. It gave us a mental break in terms of we are now feeling a little better and they are now appreciative of all the government projects that we actually got a chance to look at. And so at the end of the day, we are able to now make better decisions because we are informed. She said the tour fulfilled the objectives based on the feedback from officials and members of the public. It was something different. It was a welcome, a welcome division. As a matter of fact, the majority of the PSAs were happy that they were able to, you know, just see in, in actuality what is happening, seeing that um, the work is being done. And so they have a better perspective. We went by the bus terminus as well in Grenville, where we proposed to do a green space. So it's not just about what happens and what we have to make decisions on, but also how it will impact the, the public. And whilst we were there, people keep saying, oh, we need this and we need that. We need a bench and we're so happy to see you. I remember one um, PS saying this is the first time that something like that happened and that they're able to now go out and interact and see in action what is actually happening. The work of Dr. Nicole Philip Dow, author of the textbook, Junior History of Grenada, will be used to teach Grenadian history to secondary school students at the start of the new school term. We have more in this Annette Moore report. There's good news as the Ministry of Education is introducing the subject Grenadian history in secondary schools from the upcoming Michaelmas term in September 2023, where it will be taught at the Form 1 and Form 2 level. This move is expected to produce well-rounded graduates and citizens who will develop a strong sense of national identity and patriotism. It's extremely important to understand where we came from. It is evident that when people do not know their own history, they tend to latch on to things that may not be beneficial to them. She promotes empathy. As we study civilizations, as we study people, as we study the things that affected them, We develop a sense of empathy. It's very exciting um, to know that we're actually going to make history mandatory, uh, Grenadian history mandatory for Grenadian students. I think it's, it's something that's uh, long overdue. Dr. Nicole Dow is the author of the text, 
namely the Junior History of Grenada, which is published by Collins, a publishing house she's previously worked with. She co-authored their social studies text for Forms 2 and 3 and collaborated on the editing of the History of Trinidad and Tobago. Congratulations to Dr. Dow on an excellent piece of work. There is a lot of ignorance about our Grenadian history and this book would definitely narrow a lot of the gaps in that. I looked at the style of presenting history. Um, the books were very interactive. Um, there are these sex sections that look at things like, did you know? So it piques the students' interest, the exercises that we use. So I was really interested in writing something like that for Grenada. So it was very important that our students have an understanding of who they are, and thus the reason for writing of the text. Um, and then now meeting with teachers and doing an actual workshop on the actual teaching of the of the history text. I taught at TAM CC, I've done courses at SGU, and I meet students who are late teens, early twenties, sometimes late thirties, and they don't have a clue. And it's our fault. We have to take responsibility for the fact that we have not taught them, we have not exposed them, so it's our responsibility to do that. Dow, who is the head of site at the University of the West Indies Open Campus in Grenada, is pleased to have completed the text after approximately 18 months spent in writing and revision, having begun the process in 2020. One-day workshops on the introduction of the National History Curriculum for lower secondary schools were held with several groups of history teachers at Marishaw House in St. George this week. The standards for the teaching of Grenadian history in primary schools will soon be developed as part of the OECS Pearl and then introduced. Dow says the Junior History of Grenada text has been long in the making, having spoken to several education ministers about producing the text and the teaching of Grenadian history, beginning with former Minister Clarice Charles and ending with the current Minister for Education, Senator the Honorable David Andrew. Minister Andrew was very happy to partner with between myself and the publisher because one of the issues with this is that it must be endorsed by the by the Ministry of Education. So we got the endorsement from the Ministry of Education and worked hand in hand with curriculum officer, uh, Mr. Brave Boy, and he would have gotten teachers from the secondary school to read through the text as well, so that we get their feedback as well. Graduate one teacher at the Grenville Secondary School, Anne Batiste Walters, is thrilled at the development given that she teaches history. She revealed that she was doing her own inclusion of some Grenadian history for the benefit of her students and is now happy for the structured approach. I would like to thank Dr. Nicole Philip Dow for bringing in such a very needed textbook. Um, I've been a teacher for the past 18 years and this is the very first time that we have a history book that is indigenous to Grenada. In terms of the content, excellent. In terms of um, the student um, friendliness um, with the pictures, in terms of the questioning, there is um, a lot of higher and lower order questioning to allow students analysis and evaluation of the historical activities. Um, there is also an opportunity for fun and also to bring in IT because there are some activities where the students could use their, their, their gadgets, whether it be their cell phones, whether it be their computer, tablet. There are opportunities to incorporate the technology into the history. Actually going out in the, in, in the um, communities, looking at the artifacts, examining it, um, analyzing it, um, asking pertinent questions. John Angus Martin Martin is delighted to be part of the preparations for the introduction of Grenadian history. Martin, a historian, archivist, researcher, and the director of the Grenada National Museum, is discussing how history is researched with the teachers. My part is trying to make people think critically because I want them to question the history. Not because it's in a book means that we don't question it. So I once said, Leapers Hill, did it happen? 
Leapers Hill, did it happen? How did it happen? Is the story correct? Is the place correct? He views the information that the students will obtain as key to the development of the creative sector. I think it also affords Grenadians who go into the creative industries to have a good idea of what their culture is because they can use that, you know, for their artistic endeavors and other things like that. If you're talking about filmmaking or art, so I think there's a lot of potential. Martin's book, A to Z, also complements this current history text, providing in-depth knowledge of all things Grenadian. Kenny James, former vice principal at the St. Rose Modern Secondary School, who taught history as far back as 1995, is passionate about the subject. James is currently an executive officer with the Grenada Union of Teachers. He represented the GUT on a history task force in 2017, which he says was organized by CSEC to evaluate the state of history in the region given the decline in popularity. He notes that one of the recommendations was that history should be taught at the primary and lower secondary levels. He is pleased with the text that will now structure the teaching of this subject. There's something about children and colors. So the color, it's attractive. Then when you get in, there are students who would, especially at the lower levels, who would, what we would say, picture read. So they'll go through the book and look at the pictures. And after being captured by the pictures, they'll want to start to read. And this is what you get in this text. It's in color, history in color. So it's not a dead man science. It's a living thing that you're going to experience. James discussed the development of a timeline of events that will be easily understood by students. He also touched on the Caribbean civilization and its unique features, as well as the relationship between knowing one's history and the ability to empathize. He also gave an example from his teaching days as to why knowledge is power. We were discussing in social studies the role of the opposition and the fact that a critical or a main role of the opposition is to criticize government's policies. We did that class maybe the Wednesday, the following Monday, when I went back to class, a young man said to me, Mr. James, thanks. I said, what happened? He said, I handled them in the shop over the weekend. He went to the shop, and there was a conversation in the shop about government and opposition and what have you. And he listened to them, and he said to them, well, what are you talking about? This is what the opposition is supposed to do, to criticize government's policies, to provide alternatives. And he was happy that when he was finished there, the shop was in full agreement with him. And he left beating his chest. Now, once we able to get this information in the hands and the minds and the hearts of our children, it's going to filter through the rest of the, of the population. For educators and others wishing to try their hand at writing a text, Dow has some advice. If you feel really passionate about it, I would say to go for it. Don't just say, okay, I can't, I can't do this. Um, we have publishers like, like Collins who have been really meeting with, they want to meet with teachers, persons that are in the classroom every day and have that experience. Rafael Johnson, an educator at TAMCC, more popularly known as Crocator, has published his text, CSEC Mathematics, through Collins. His text joins Dow's on the secondary school book list this summer. There is good news for other members of the public who would like to get a copy of the Junior History of Grenada text. I have family in the diaspora. They're asking for books for their children who are around that same, same age group because they want them to have a sense of Grenadian identity. We do have a launch in September. The dates have not been finalized yet, and so the cost has not been finalized yet, but we will have a launch between the first and second week of September so that anyone who wants to purchase can actually purchase. For the GIS Week in Review, I'm Annette Moore.
This is the Government Weekend Review. When we return, Bel Isle Community Center officially opened. Prepare for hurricane. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries too. Waterproof flashlight candles will do things stuff. Garbage bag, first aid kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair prepare for hurricane. Welcome back. Residents of Belle Isle St. David are excited about the benefits of the newly refurbished community center that promises to be a game changer for the community with plans of skills development and training. On Thursday, the facility was officially opened in the presence of Parliamentary Representative Honorable Deacon Mitchell and Chinese Ambassador His Excellency Wei Hon Shen. It is equipped with a computer room, washroom, kitchenette, office space, meeting and conference area and storage. Liana, Charles and other residents are happy that the facility can now be used to positively enhance the community. I feel very excited about the opening of the community center because I heard the Prime Minister said that there will be sewing machines and recently um, I'm learning how to sew and stuff so I can make some good clothes and my cousins and them, they, they know how to play on computers, they know a lot about computers so I guess they'll feel excited because they could play with the computers. It has been a long awaited initiative and we are so happy that the government could have seen it fit to take on the initiative of refurbishing the community center. I think it's going to be a real addition in terms of education, where we are going to host many different programs for our community members, especially our youths, so that we can nurture them into being the people that they ought to be. So I think it's a, it's a wonderful um, opportunity for the people of the community to make every opportunity that is given to them by the refurbishment of the group, especially our younger ones. The, the group that is a form in the community has pledged to make sure that the maintenance of the, the building is adhered to 100%. We want to make sure that we have laws instituted so that we can counteract any vandalization by any member of the community or any outsider. And yeah, so we are going to make sure that um, this building is being maintained because this is a, it's a gift that was given to us by a Chinese government together in collaboration with the Guinea government. So we don't want it to go to waste. We want to make sure that we, we take every opportunity to make sure that we maintain 100%. I feel great. I feel great about it. Yeah, very great because I, I walk here when it was painting, I paint, I clean the toilet, I clean the kitchen, everything. And it is very good for the, the community, community. If they bring the, 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 com the computer and the machine, it will send them a father you know to help themselves you know and to help the, the the young ones i will sew because i could so then it, it benefit for us a lot the refurbishment of the community center was a campaign promised by honorable deacon mitchell during the 2022 general election who collaborated with the chinese embassy the roman catholic church and other local stakeholders to renovate the existing structure which was damaged during hurricane ivan in 2004 and has since been used as storage Honorable Deacon Mitchell, who is also the MP for St. David, encouraged the community members to use the facility to help resolve issues, develop and harness skills, and create a culture of togetherness. It is an opportunity for you to use this building to enhance your community spirit, to enhance your skill set, to ensure that our young persons have a place where they can come to learn anything. And I say anything because if you have access to the internet, you can become anything you wish to be. And the transformation of this building is simply symbolic that if you set a goal, and if you work towards it, and if you speak to people and you ask for help, and we work together, that we can achieve anything. Use the facility to ensure that you can enhance the community of Belay. This is just the start. There is more to come, and therefore I want you to show us your gratitude 
by making sure that when we come back here one year from now, we have the sewing machines, we have the computers, people are learning skills, people are using the facility to talk, to socialize, to help solve community issues. We have had a very sad and dark period in the last two weeks, unprecedented in the history of Grenada. If you have a dispute with your neighbor, invite him to come to the community center. There are 50 chairs, sit down. Sit down and talk out your dispute. Talk out whatever the challenge is and find common solutions to them. You don't need to resort to the cutlass. You don't need to resort to the piece of wood and you don't need to resort to cussing. You have a place to come, to sit down and to have a conversation. Ambassador Wei Han Shen said the People's Republic of China is pleased to continue partnering with government and organizations to fulfill Grenada's transformation agenda. He outlined other projects funded by China. China is a good friend and partner of Grenada. Kaleku and Pitman. Yes, this tri island, beautiful country. <clears throat> is playing its part in the implementation of the transform strategy of the government led by the Honorable Deacon Chair, Prime Minister of Grenada. And the Chinese Embassy is also happy to be part of this effort. This project was funded by the Chinese Embassy. And the Embassy also donated 50 folding chairs. This, and that has one TV set. And I'm going to hand over the pedestrian bridge over Dukan River at Mount Williams to the local community next week on Wednesday afternoon. The refurbishment of basket port at Grand Anse Court, this is all undergoing. Also, we will equip the ICT center at Chandimel Primary School in St. Patrick. Vicar General Reverend Father Carl Haynes underscored the importance of partnership between the church and the state, one he believes will put Grenada in a better place. Whatever we can do to assist in ensuring that we have programs to develop the community here, we will be willing to assist. I remember when we had one meeting here, I made a commitment to source some sewing machines Right, so that people in the community can learn to sew. And uh, I am still pursuing that, okay? I'm, I'm still pursuing that. And so I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for the initiative, for the vision in seeing that this building can uh, be used for the community. As church, state, we have to work together because we are all about service to our people. And the more we work together, Grenada will be a better place. The Belle Isle Community Center is the first of many in the constituency to be refurbished. Keen and exciting competition in Grenada over the next week with the official opening of the Windward Islands School Games at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium on Saturday. The event is scheduled to commence at 11 a.m. followed by a track and field meet at 1.40 p.m. Teams are coming from three other Windward Islands, Dominica, St. Lucia and St. Vincent, to participate with the Grenadian athletes in volleyball, football, basketball, track and field and netball. St. Lucia arrived early on the Spice Isle on Wednesday for the Games. Acting coordinator of sports Jerry Alexis, after visiting the game venues on Wednesday to finalize logistics called on the Grenadian public to come out and support the games at the various venues which is free of cost to enter. 
The games is on Saturday, starting Saturday. We expect also the public to come out um, to, to all the games. We would have just published a schedule as to all the activities that will be happening over the next week. He added that he is confident that Grenada will perform at its best to take back the championship. We just want the public to know that we are ready, Grenada is ready, we're ready to host, we're ready to, to take back our championships. St. Lucia would have won in 2019 and, and we are going out all out to make sure that we, we become champ again. Games will take place at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, Karanaj Sporting Complex, Tantine Sporting Complex and the Labory Indo Complex. The second cohort of directors from statutory bodies and state-owned enterprises who received training through the Education and Accreditation Program were on Monday 17th July presented with their certificates as newly minted accredited directors in Grenada. Accredited Director Richard Duncan applauded the directors for their participation in what he says is a training that will help them to improve on the effective execution of duties as directors. It is never easy for us as adult learners to undertake these types of training. Sometimes it is easy. In fact, the easiest type of training to attend is those where there is no assessment in the end psychologically and emotionally as adult learners. We agree to that? Yes. And I will tell you that there are directors whose reluctance to attend, to me, is on that premise alone. That fear of failure. Now, I say that in the context of how we were brought up, right? Where we do not like to fail. And because of not liking to fail and fearing to fail, we often do not realize our true and full potential. In some cultures, failure is applauded because what happens is that the society knows for sure and that individual also knows that he has one dumb, meaning that he will not do what he did that caused him to fail, he'll do something different. If you never try, you'll never know where your weaknesses are. I think the second point I want to make is that we succeed through collaboration. By bringing the directors together, we were able to compare notes across statutory bodies, across experiences, and there are those of us who have served for years and have never been exposed to the body of knowledge that is required to be a true and proper director. So we've basically been operating blind for a long time. Faculty member of DEEP and past president of Corporate Governance Institute Canada, Janice Revan, told the directors that she was extremely happy to have shared in the process. We talk about making good decisions. We never really make a decision all on our own. We've usually asked for guidance, like we asked for prayer tonight. Um, and that's what happens in organizations. It's always around a group. And I've, I've chosen as my theme for the past few weeks in my thoughts and some of my writings, um, an old proverb that I uh, stumbled across, and that's that with one finger, no matter how strong your finger is, you cannot pick up a pebble. You need collaborations. You need teamwork. And going forward uh, with your accreditation, you're only on the pathway of a learning journey. I've been in governance, I think, since I was born. And today, I was uh, with a group like yourself. And I honestly feel like I learned more than I gave. So enjoy your journey um, being board members for the organizations that you're with, the public bodies that you're representing as agents of the government today and in your future on other boards. It's a learning process. And if you keep in mind that you, you're only going to win if you're part of the winning team, be collaborative, be respectful, enjoy what you can learn from your colleagues. And um, um, I'm so proud of you. 
General Manager of the Eastern Caribbean Securities Exchange, Trevor Blake, says the program is of significant importance and developing well-rounded directors since its rollout in June of 2007. I must commend the government of Grenada for its initiative in ensuring that directors of the various public sector institutions are fully equipped for the important roles they play in the governance of state-owned enterprises. Not only did the government declare that governance training was a requirement for membership of boards, but it also went further, arranging to bring uh, the deep here in Grenada for the exclusive benefit of the directors of state-owned enterprises. And here I must pause again to recognize the instrumentality of Mr. Richard Duncan, uh, who led the charge and has been our, our close collaborator and local facilitator for all of, of this. Without him, none of this would, would, have been, would have been possible. During his presentation of the keynote address, Finance Minister Honorable Dennis Cornwall said as an accredited director for the past six years, having done the program in Barbados, he is very pleased to see directors embrace the opportunity to be certified. The government is committed to re the reform of our statutory bodies and state owned enterprise to ensure that they deliver the mandate in a professional, efficient, and effective manner. Critical to the success of these bodies is ensuring that they are properly governed, including by having in place fit for purpose board of directors. It is no secret that what we inherited is a situation where many of our current directors who serve on boards and state -owned enterprise have not been given the requisite training nor are fully aware of their fiduciary duties and other responsibilities. This approach to governance of statutory bodies and state -owned enterprise should not be allowed to perpetuate. We are committed to doing things differently in this regard. And you are the pioneers of this change. Now that you are trained and certified, you need to lead from the front in improving the overall performance of the bodies on which you serve. Government, he says, will continue to do its part and stressed the importance of critical areas that directors need to provide oversight. Your fiduciary duties and responsibility. And under this, I want to look at honesty and good faith. Act honestly in good faith with a view towards the best interests of their respective enterprises. The Enterprise Code of Business Conduct and Ethics provide detailed requirements to help directors understand how to manage any conflict of interest. Duty of care. Directors are required to exercise a high degree of care, diligence, and skill that a reasonable, prudent person would exercise in similar circumstances. Two, standard of behavior must be established by the board. The board must establish the following key standards of behavior for directors. A, general. As a member of each, a member of the board, each director will, one, demonstrate a solid understanding of the role, responsibilities, and legal duties of a director and the governance structure of the enterprise as outlined in the legislation, regulations, and its policy. We take another break when we return. Plans in train to update Grenada's fishing vessels safety at sea regulations. Four countries, 248 athletes, five venues, five discipline of sports. July 22nd to July 29th in Spice Country. For the much anticipated return of the CBN Winlot, Winwood Island School Games. Hosted by the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture. Come out in your numbers as our athletes will compete against St. Lucia, Dominica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in track and field, volleyball, football, basketball and netball. Games begin with an official opening ceremony 11 a.m. on Saturday, July 22nd at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium followed by track and field. 1.40 p.m. The CBN Winlot, Windward Island School Games continues daily at the following venues from 9 a.m. Library Indoor Complex, Karanai Sporting Facility, Tanti Netball Facility, Queen's Park Ground 2 and the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Come out in your numbers and support our athletes as they compete for the Coveted prize. Champs of the CBN Winlot, Windward Island School Games 2020.
2023. Welcome back. With an improved fishing sector filled with larger fishing vessels and tasked with longer fishing expeditions, the Fisheries Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives is seeking to update Grenada's Fishing Vessels Safety at Sea Regulations 1990. We have more in this report. The Fisheries Division held a national validation workshop on Tuesday, marking the final consultative activity for the purpose of developing the final draft for reviewing and updating Grenada's fisheries regulations, which was initially established in 1990. The process of reviewing and updating these regulations began in November 2022 with a focus group meeting, which included representatives from key stakeholder organizations who discussed the development of a national strategy, themes and approaches for the review and update of the existing regulations. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, Fisheries and Cooperatives, Aaron Francois, emphasized the people-centered approach to the updating of the regulations. When all fishermen get lost at sea. We see the anguish on the faces of relatives and friends. And we too in the ministry, you know, because many times you feel really powerless because you are not able to really help in the manner that you would want to. And so these regulations are really to help us to regulate our behaviors in terms of as we approach, as we do our craft. The regulation is to protect you. The regulation is to continue to strengthen the, the enabling environment for fisheries development. Chief Fisheries Officer and the Technical Director in the Division of Fisheries, Justin Rennie, highlighted the initiative's role in enhancing search and rescue operations and its potential contributions to food and nutrition security, poverty alleviation, employment generation, and foreign exchange earnings. Whenever there is any distress out at sea, search and rescue is a big thing. It takes time, resources, fuel, you know, to actually go out and search for our fishermen when they are distressed out at sea. With those equipments, which are part of the regulations, it will make search and rescue much, much more easy, much easier to find our fishermen. This initiative is implemented by the Ministry through the Fisheries Division in collaboration with the Windward Islands Research and Education Foundation, Windriff of St. George's University, with funding provided by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Safety and Sea Specialist with Windruff, Roland Baldio, said new regulations need to be drafted to fit the current industry. Based on the type of vessels we are using and the technologies that are available, we need to improve and update. So that's why uh, for some of the category of vessels, we have I new items that would be on the, uh, required uh, for the boats to carry when going out at sea. For example, um, we're into a satellite uh, age now, and a device that can track a boat, and if you're in distress, a land-based station will know if, where you are in real time, and so on. So those things are important. Um, different types of uh, devices for signaling uh, distress at sea, and so So we need to improve, and you know, having new regulations is critical for this industry now, with the number of boats, the size of the boats, the distance they are going out to fish. Fisheries officer Lisa Chetram, who conducts fishing vessel inspection on a yearly basis, says by updating the fisheries regulations, there will be a greater emphasis on ensuring that fishers adhere to the rules and guidelines set forth, ultimately leading to improved compliance and better management of the fishing activities. Too many times we have persons taking things lightly that you know when you ask them for certain items that you know you know they, they don't think it's important but this workshop proves to show that we need to enforce and we need to ensure that our officials see the importance not just of having the items but importance of safeguarding their lives and the persons that are in the vessel with them fishermen from the sister island of Kariakou, Cadel Oliver said this initiative is a perfect opportunity for younger fishers to protect their trade Based on the regulations that they're um, that they're applying now, you know where Port Authority and Grenada Coast Guard are involved, the fishermen should take more initiative at taking the training, so they can um, they should be more safe at sea and they will be able to know exactly 
water area, the perspective of handling the vessel and the navigation parts of it. After the consultation process, a proposal will be presented to the Cabinet along with a justification for endorsing the updated regulations. Subsequently, the Minister will be required to introduce it to Parliament to obtain the necessary approval before it can be officially published in the Gazette. Once it is gazetted, the updated regulations will become an integral part of the comprehensive fisheries legislation. Government officials joined the OECS in a three-day training by the International Organization for Migration that will equip them to better formulate and implement migration-related policies. The training, which was hosted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development in conjunction with the International Organization for Migration, ended on Thursday. The program was introduced to the Caribbean in 2021. Irana Yar, Deputy Sub-Regional Coordinator for the Caribbean and Head of the International Organization for Migration, Guyana, outlined the objectives of the training. The objective of the Essentials of Migration Management Training is to guide policymakers and practitioners and to provide an overview of the key elements of international migration management. This training could not be possible without the support we provided from the US State Department, the Bureau of Population, Refugee and Migration, also the support of IOM's Western Hemisphere Program, who would have supported trainings in Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Dominica, and I mentioned Grenada and Suriname, and also Guyana. Roxy McLeish Hutchinson, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development, believes the training will benefit all involved. The idea of looking at the essentials of migration management, which is where the policy emphasis should rest, is that we harness the benefits of migration and we develop a policy framework to deal with the challenges that would arise from migration. And so this workshop this morning is a golden opportunity for us as a region to discuss the challenges that we face, the challenges that we see on the horizon in other areas where there are migration, um, and how can we develop cohesive policies to help us treat with those issues. Because in our region, what affects one country eventually affects the other country. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell has outlined his vision for the Grenada Transport Commission during a meeting with members of the Board of Directors and the Traffic Wardens on Thursday. Part of it includes designating specific tasks to wardens so that the police can focus more on other areas. Prime Minister Mitchell was joined at the meeting by Chairman of the Board, Mr. Francis Paul, Deputy Chairman of the Grenada Transport Commission Board, Jasmine Alexander, and the Royal Grenada Police Force representative, Inspector Ryan Smith. I've been publicly indicating that there are lots of things that the police do, which to my mind needs to be transferred to civilians. Now when I say civilians, I include the traffic warrants. The licensing and inspection of vehicles, for example. There's no reason for the police to be involved in that. The police is already stretched and on the man in many of the policing areas. And so from a vision perspective, there are a number of areas, licensing and inspection of vehicles, the passport office, immigration services, many of these things, the vision is to move these things into civilian hands so that the police can be proper policing rather than work that is better suited for civilians. He said the meeting is important as it gives the wardens an opportunity to be vocal about their views, challenges and ideas. The task is, is that of mine as minister. Uh, the Permanent Secretary of the Transport Commission Board uh, to make sure that we address the challenges that you face. And so one of the reasons for having this meeting is to hear from you unfiltered about what have been some of your experiences, what are some of the issues you think uh, needs to be addressed, and importantly as well, what are some of your ideas and thoughts and recommendations and suggestions for addressing some of these.
Chairman of the Grenada Transport Commission, Francis Paul, reminded the wardens that their role helps fortify the efforts of the RGPF's traffic department. I want all the traffic wardens to understand that you are a very important cog in the wheel of ensuring that the transportation system in Grenada is run efficiently. Your role is to augment the traffic department of the Royal Grenada Police Force. That story just ended the week in review. Until next time, I am Rakesha St. Louis.